Oh my God, I feel like an international reporter. Can I say where you're at? Yeah, of course. Bert Kreischer starring in his own movie, Shooting in Serbia. Yeah. Um, an international star. Now you got a lot of fans out that way. I know that. I mean, you're almost near all your buddies out there in Russia. You are a Eastern European, I'd say I, a damn near a pinup. <laughs> You got the build, man. You got that, 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 I don't know, Slovakian. Nah, you, you don't want those people to get their hands on you. They'll, they'll, they'll tear your limbs off. This part of the, this part of the world has been good to me. <laughs> you want to hear something crazy, Bill? Last, my buddy texts me and he says, last week was when I met you at Florida State. That's when you started at Florida State like 30 years ago. 30 years ago, last week, that week is when I first went to Florida State. 25 years ago, that week, that exact same week is when I went to Russia for the first time. And then last week, at 48 years old, I started production on my movie. Whatever the fuck has happened during that one week of my life has been good shit. That one fucking week. Yeah, I, I, I love that kind this of shit. This is the dumb response to that. Dude, this time next year, we got to go to Vegas. <laughs> you're, you're gonna hit everything um well, that's it's, awesome uh, dude i'm i'm very uh happy for you and excited to see i mean it's about time there's been an what is this an autobiographical yeah well it's i mean it's based on a truth by get you know i don't know i don't even know how that works, but all right well you know something dude, you definitely I mean, I have I don't know, there's not a lot of things i can tell Sorry, you would definitely have Eastern, Eastern European block. fucking yeah, internet. Is it dial up over there? Because there's been a lot of slowing down and speeding up during this. So we're just going to have to deal with this. Okay. This is what happens when you have the sh same shooting schedule as James Bond. Okay. <laughs> Bert Kreischer is going to a new level. Bert, when you get nominated, okay, we can talk about it because this is like your lucky week. When you get nominated, yeah. Okay, uh, do you go shirtless on the red carpet? Now, this or is, this, is that a separate brand from your stand-up special? This is Bert. This is a new, a new, more uh, uh, older, wiser, more clothed Bert Kreischer. I go, I go shirtless, Bill. On the red carpet. Oh, hardcore! I love it. Now you're gonna go uh, Chippendales hardcore. with like the uh, bow tie. Or are you saving the surprise? Uh, I've started wearing scarves. So probably just a scarf. I love it. I love it. Hey, hey that's um, the way to go. You know what I wanted to ask? You know what I wanted to ask you about? Because uh, this is all brand new stuff to me, and it's I and could it's mail weird. you some weed. No, yeah. But what what were things <laughs> you did? What were things you did where you were really nervous when you started? Like it was when you first started stand up? Because I was terrified last week. Oh yeah, no, everything. Every, everything everything has scared the shit out of me from uh, going on my first open mic to uh, host an SNL last year. That all I, dude, scared I, the I shit thought about, out of me. You know, I thought about, I thought about you hosting SNL and I thought risk versus reward. Like, I, I don't know if I would, in, I don't know if the reward is high enough for me to enjoy it and you murdered it. But just the the nerves of that must have been absolutely terrifying. No, I I I had a meltdown right before I went in, but then I for the rest of the week because I didn't want to put my wife through it, you know, for the whole yeah. week. So I just I just talk shit in my head, and there's a different like there's this talking shit which is actually self help, shouting down your demons, I believe, um, and then there's just being an arrogant ass. I wasn't going around going, I'm going to be the greatest host of all time. I wasn't saying that. People would say, hey, man, good luck on SNL. You're going to kill it. And I would just say, I am. And it felt good to say it. I just kept saying it. And then it just kind of went away. And then I really minimized the stress as much as I could. I was just like, okay, today's Monday. When it, when we're not going live today. Why don't oh, I enjoy man. Monday? Today's Tuesday, not going live. So I, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were out. Friday was pre-tapes. And I've done movies. And if you screw it up, you get to do it again, which is the situation yeah. you're in. And then um, Saturday was just like, well, there's no reason to get nervous. 
until 11.45 p.m. Other than that, you know, the run through, have fun, yeah. act like an idiot, make all the yeah. crazy choices, see what works, see what doesn't. And then, uh, then like, dude, and I got to tell you something, when you, when you go to tape the show, it goes by in like two seconds. Before you realize what the hell you just did, you're introducing the band for the second time and they're telling you the last sketch got cut. And then you're just like, really? I remember that. And then Pete goes, dude, you're done. You're done. You did it. And I was just like, oh my God. And then they're playing dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's like clapping. He's like, oh my God. I, did. I want to thank everybody. He's like, I didn't blow it. I don't know how good it was, but I, I remembered that I, you know, I didn't mess up my jokes and it's, it's so what I do with, um, with a gig like that, the acting gig, like I've never started something, but I had, a, uh, you know, that big one a couple of years ago with Pete, you know, opposite an Oscar winner. I had another meltdown. I just, you just go like, what I don't do. I don't think of the whole thing of I'm on this thing for fucking three months. That's what I did when I first got there. Yeah. And I wanted to quit the business and just be a guy oh. that drives a truck. Bill, That's what Bill, I wanted to Bill, do. I said that the first, before we started shooting, I thought I, I was saying the most negative shit in my head that I was like, because I was nervous. I was like, what the fuck? Why am I doing this? I got, I got podcasts, like stand up. Like who the fuck? I, I write my own words. I say my own words on stage. Like you just I don't want to be this famous. Yeah, right. I just right, want to be that. little me. I want to be little me in my little part of entertainment. That's what always goes. This is too high, man. This is too high. You start freaking out. What if we have an engine failure? Yeah. yeah I definitely <laughs> um dude, I have to watch that because that is a form of self-sabotage. So, and it'll cause you, if you, if you don't have control of that, you will steer the bus into a tree and take everybody sitting behind you with you. So you really got to make sure. So what I do in those situations is I go in there and what I'm doing is for the other people. I just show up on time. I know my lines. I fucking kill it. I, I just try to make everybody laugh. I try to keep it light, not be a pain in the ass and just show up ready to work. And once you do that for like three, four days in a row and they realize, oh, he wasn't just in a good mood. This is how he's going to be. Yeah. Everybody chills and then they're having a good time. And then it's so out of your control. Like you just got to hope it comes together. And uh, as far as acting, dude, I don't give a, if somebody gives me a fucking line read, this is how I know I'm not an actor. I love a line read. Like, because they're trying to dance around it. No, it's more emotional. It's blah, blah, blah. I, just, I, I love a line just, read. I, I love a line read. Yeah, just say how you want me to say it. I'll do three different versions of that. And if that doesn't work, you got the other bullshit that I did that obviously didn't work because you st were still shooting this shit. I don't understand actors that get upset with a line read. It's like, don't you guys want to go home? Yeah. It's like the yeah. most fucked up communication. Like, I'm going to tell you what I want, but I can't just tell you. So I got to go around and be like, okay, Bert, like, it's it's like, you know, it's kind of like, say like the line is, let's get the fuck out of here. They, they got to use like a, they got to use different words. <laughs> like, hey, man. And it's, you're like, hey, man, hurry up. So then you got to be like, hey, yeah. let's get the fuck out of here. You're like trying to match what they said. It's just like, say the words that I'm saying the way you want me to say it so I can fucking go home. Yeah, yeah. Because I have, I have fucking anxiety. What's amazing I, I to me is, uh, Sorry, I'm, we're going to over talk each other with this feed. Sorry. No, no, no. You talk, you talk, you talk, you talk. Go, go, you talk. Say what you're going to say. I noticed on my last two acting gigs um, was the first time I wasn't nervous at all, in a good way. We're like, you know, if you go down to the store, which, by the way, is open again, um, if you go down there, you know, you got to do a 10 minute spot. You're not nervous. You've done it a million times, but blah, 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 blah. I finally got to a point, the last two acting gigs, I just did one and I did one, uh, last year before all this pandemic shit happened. Um, oh, uh, uh, the Mandalorian and I wasn't nervous. I was coming back. I knew the people on set. I had already proven that, you know, 
I, 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 I could do the job they wanted me to do so I could relax and not think I was going to get fired after every take. And, um, and we just joked around and they were busting my balls. And I was busting their chops and we just really just kind of had fun. And then all of a sudden, uh, it was just, it's like, that's a wrap on bill. And I was just like, I remember driving home being actually like sad, like, wow, man, I'm, I'm really sad. That's over. I love working for those people. But also I'm psyched because now I can, you know, sleep in tomorrow. But I then I was thinking like, hey, I didn't get really get nervous. I didn't get nervous. I ad libbed. I made the crew laugh. And that was like a big thing from like to me, that's like the actor version of like when I was a kid and I would watch a comedian do panel that was really good at it. Yeah. I remember being like, I want to get good at that. And then when I would see actors and they would improvise and make the crew laugh on a take. I remember thinking like, I would love to do that. Cause like the first, I don't know how many decade and a half of acting every once in a while I would do it and I would make them laugh and I, I would feel a hundred feet tall, but then I do it again and it wouldn't work. And then I'd be like that buzzard on Bugs Bunny, like, Oh no, no, not going to do it. No, no, going to get fired. No. And I just was really, cause I am inherently a really shy introverted person. So, my and my acting gigs were so few and far between that whatever I learned, ninety percent of it went away, and I had to start over again. Kind of like yeah. what the way when I try to learn French, I do it hardcore for three months, then leave for fucking four months and come back. I just never get to it. So, um, anyway, why am I talking so much when you're no 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 no, no no I'm, no no I'm because because I've you're you're one of the few guys in our field with the comics that have. Put himself out there and tried to do movies and and set your the, 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 the fear is nah not not that many a lot of guys get into the lane of podcasting and stand up and then that's where they live and myself being one of them oh you mean but, now uh, okay but now. I, and, okay. and and you've done things in this business that yeah yeah now and you've done things in this business which make you really uncomfortable like snl hosting snl and I mean, I, you were one of the first guys I remember paneling often where it was like, like everyone was like, oh, I want to panel now, you know? Um, and I, and I, I've been thinking about you a lot. I'm dying to know what it was like. Cause when you work with someone who can really act, like I think me and you are like jobbers, right? Ham and eggers. But when you yeah, yeah. work with like a Marissa Tomei or the women I'm working with right now and they can really act and they all of a sudden flip that switch and they make you act. You're like, wait, what the fuck did you just do? No, but that means you're a good actor, though, because you're listening to them and you're taking what they're giving you, because that's all you got to do, dude. It's like um, it's like jamming with people that are better musicians than you are. Yeah. You just don't get outside of what you do. <laughs> like, I remember uh, I had a I had a drum thing coming up. And I was no, I was going to go see this this bass player, Victor Wooten, who's one of the best bass players in the world. And he's at this place, Crash Mansion or something, downtown LA. I don't even know if it even exists, but I just had this feeling he was going to call me up on stage because he was that kind of guy where he yeah. didn't give a shit. And one of my uh, my buddies gave me, I go, dude, he's going to pull me up there. I'm going to make an ass out of myself or something. He goes, dude, just go up there and do the Phil Rudd thing. Just lay down a beat and they'll be on top of it. It'll be fine. And you'll get away with it. So I went to the show and he's just bringing one beast after another. Hey, this guy played on the Thriller album. Come on up and play keys. <laughs> and he does them first. And he goes, there's a comedian in the crowd. And dude, I if I wasn't there with my wife, I wouldn't have gone up. My really? wife looked at me. She's like, you have to go up. And it was one of those moments in life. Like I've had so many. My legs are moving as my brain is going, stop, stop, turn around, run out the door. And I walked all the way up there. <laughs> I just sort of grabbed the mic and, and I made some jokes or whatever. So people kind of understood that I was a comedian. I mean, they do, this was in the 2000s. Like nobody had any fucking idea who I was. Yeah. Um, and I just went up there and I did what my buddy told me to do. And it ended up going great. Bit of a train wreck because I didn't know how to, I had never done it. It was weird. I played, yeah. I, once again, introverted and shot. I played drums for 20 years by myself. <laughs> 
like other than jamming with my brothers when I was a kid, I just played by myself. And that that's what woke me up of like, oh, music you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do, do it with other people. people. <laughs> yeah. So um, getting back to the acting thing, just go in and and if they're if you're working with great actors, you, you just give them what you got. They're going to then give you what they have and then you just react to it. And then that's it. And then also know that you don't have to be gigantic, little things, little glances, little fucking things really become big things on people's flat screen TVs. And if we ever get movie theaters back, which I hope we hope we do, that's about all I know about acting. So um, I just hit the, hit, hit the fucking piece of tape and I say what they wrote. And if they don't like it, I just go, just give me a line. Reed. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I... I have no problem with the line read whatsoever. My problem with the marks is every time I walk up to my mark, my mark and this is how I do it. Hey, what are you guys yeah, doing do today? <laughs> what you I've gotta do that. is I always make the character's choice that this guy looks at his shoes a lot. So I just sort of <laughs> saunter up walking like this. And then, but you kind of ease into, what you wanna do is you wanna catch your piece of tape when it's further away from you. Yeah. Okay. In helicopter, that's more of a low approach. You don't want to do a steep approach. You can't come walking up going like this. Especially the ugly, <laughs> my top of my ugly head. You don't want to be doing that. Dude, I do that shit. I do that shit all the fucking time. Oh, that's the number one thing I, they I'll say to me. I just make a is, choice. That, and all I'm looking, doing, all I'm doing is just trying tape. to find that. Yeah. They'll shoot around it enough times. So the thing about yeah. it is if you give like a glance far enough away of it, I think they can shoot around it. Yeah. Because I've never actually seen in my my stuff that um, I don't watch my shit. So maybe they do. Watching all these assholes listen to this are going to fucking. Oh, he's clearly right there looking at a tape. It's one of those scenes that starts with you sitting and you never get up. And they still think they they busted you. <laughs> oh, by the way, I love sit down acting. Oh, Yeah. If you're if you're a nervous Nelly, sit down acting's great because all the nervousness goes into into the chair. One of the most difficult things when you first start acting is standing up acting. <laughs> I remember I took an acting <laughs> class and the lady <laughs> made somebody in my class onto my legs because they just kept moving and then they were planted in the ground, which was making me angry that someone was putting their fucking hands on me. And I was just, I ended up having like restless leg syndrome. The class was laughing at me and I was just trying to get the fucking line out. But I was just so, well, back then, yeah, I was so uh, like, I don't know. Someday I'll smoke a cigar, dude. I figured myself I c completely out as far as like, I'm not saying I won't make any more mistakes, but like I totally understand what 20 to 50 was now, oh, what God. that was. <laughs> that that fucking shit show you know i know I, I got good at doing stand-up comedy but my my personal life the shit i did the people i hurt the way i hurt myself the fucking drinking and smoking and all the shit i did i i now know what that was all about so oh yeah. i want to go back and audition for all the roles i didn't get now that i know that like there's a confidence once you can act, well not can act, but once you do something, then you go, well shit, now I want to audition. This makes total sense. Yeah, but the thing is, is you had to go through all of those things. Yeah. Oh, dude, I had some brutal ones. Oh, I had Bill. Dude, I had one one time for Boardwalk Empire when it first came out. And I, and I was thinking, oh my God, Martin Scorsese, blah, blah, blah. And they wanted me to do some accent from the 1920s and like, I mean, like, well, let me tell you something. You? Like, well, what do you want me to? I had no idea. I didn't get a voice coach. And then I went in there, and the way it was written was the way people talk back then. And I just couldn't, like, and where I was, my head, I was so scatterbrained. I was moving a lot when I was doing stand up. I was sweating on stage. Dude, I was just like, I was in motion, not in a good way. And yeah. none of the emotion was connected to what the fuck I was doing. I was just an abused kid, now an adult, trying to figure out fucking life. So I went in there, dude, and I just fucking, 
I don't even know what the, I don't even know what I did, but I was like, not only will Martin Scorsese never work with me ever, no one will. And I, and I, and it was filmed. And I wanted to say when I walked out, like, you're not going to show him that, are you? And now I know the deal is if it sucked, she's not going to waste his time. So he never, yeah. he hopefully never saw it. 